Oi, oi, all right, all right, how's it going? I'm Grant, this is Doodle Review, and in this episode, we're continuing our theme of hip hop uh, reviews, but we're taking a detour to the UK. We're gonna be talking about Mike Skinner's latest, The Streets record, and also a very short look at the J Huss record, Beautiful and Brutal Yard, that was released earlier in the year. Let's get into it. The Streets are back. Mike Skinner's UK garage meets hip hop meets very occasionally indie adjacent ish project returned after 2020's none of us are getting out of this life alive and that record was actually the very very first album I ever published a review for which is mad. I'm guessing that collection is being written off as a bit of a mixtape as the publicity for this new record consistently mentions it as the first album since 2011's Computers and Blues and I actually think that sells none of us um, a little short as I actually found it pretty enjoyable. The response to that mixtape was fairly muted because I think the audience Skinner built in the early to mid 2000s don't really know how to take him now and I have a bit of a theory about that. Over the course of that 2002 to 2004 come up um, across original pirate material and a grand don't come for free, I felt at the time that the streets had a love it or hate it factor and where you fell on that spectrum came down in part to a generational divide, I guess. Obviously, you have to discount the people that had no taste for anything that was like rap or, you know, rap or dance based, but um, I feel like Skinner's very raw, very blunt lyricism and colloquial kind of geezer down the pub vocab that is delivered with uh, an often monotonous, often basic, even nursery rhyme-esque tone was just completely jarring to anyone above the age of 30 in 2003. That age range at the time, yes, they'd become accustomed to hip hop, but very much through the lens of popular chart-topping US hip hop. Songs with glossy production where even lyrics from a street level perspective came off as exotic, offering a voyeuristic pleasure by virtue of just being from a different place that wasn't the UK. The streets by comparison offered no escapism. You had songs called Don't Mug Yourself, Geezers Need Excitement, and of course, Fit But You Know It. These songs were about everyday British situations delivered with Skinner's regional accent and complete lack of lyrical finesse. And that's a point I'll come back to. And those, all of those things just point blank refused to offer any form of glamorization to those scenes that older audiences might have needed. Younger audiences at the time just couldn't get enough of it though. Skinner was talking about stuff that they could relate to in a way they could relate to it. In a form of hip hop as well that actually felt like their own. And of course while there was a UK hip hop scene in the 90s and early 2000s, this largely remained underground. So the streets were well, the first time this style reached a critical mass in the mainstream. And I actually think their huge success laid the groundwork for other artists that would leverage a similar authentic British perspective in their songs, going as far as Alex Turner's tales of Sheffield nights out on Arctic Monkey's first album, or even Idol's Joe Talbot today. So where does that leave the streets today? And why do I think there seems to be a bit of a muted response to these new Mike Skinner projects? Well, 15 to 20 years later, that original cohort of fans are anywhere from 30 to 40 years old with any one of the conventional trinity on their mind if they don't already have them. Property, mar marriage, kids. Worlds apart from where they were when Has It Come To This found them. Conversely, The Street's music and Mike Skinner's storytelling across this record and that previous mixtape are on one hand frozen in a kind of stasis, he's still talking about the club, but on the other hand kind of evolved in an artsy fartsy kind of way. You know, This record for instance is a concept album soundtracking a movie based on a 1940s film noir aesthetic. I don't criticise Skinner for either of those things because both of them the club tales and nightlife and the artistic aspirations are truly authentic to him. While the streets have been off and on active, Skinner has actually been consistently DJing over the past dec decade, rooting his songs in a very lived experience. And while I mentioned a lack of lyrical finesse, he has always demonstrated a really thoughtful and artistic sensibility in his writing and his public persona. So all of these components make total sense for the artist, but for the audience who associate the streets with their more untamed, responsibility-free, and dare I say it, more fun years, there's a kind of dissonance between who they were then, who they are now, and where that puts them in relation to a new streets project. 
the darker the shadow the brighter the light as an album is all right it's a bit of a mixed bag but has some really enjoyable moments surprisingly to me the lofty concept album aspect of the whole thing isn't actually an issue at all usually when an artist sets their sights on delivering a multimedia narrative in this way it kind of comes off as messy forced and sometimes pretentious to high heaven and this actually manages to avoid all of this i haven't seen the film but i think the record does a great job of spinning a pretty clear narrative that you can follow roughly if you know the broad story um, which is a noir murder mystery that takes place within the setting of a dj club circuit um, but it also completely exists on its own merits yeah like certain tracks uh, like gonna hurt when this is over paint a pretty vivid picture of what i imagine happens in the film in this case likely a scene where the protagonist gets attacked and beaten for getting too close uh, to the truth in their investigation but on the whole songs just kind of allude to the story without getting too wrapped up in explaining something that let's be honest probably only a small percentage of the audience will actually watch Usually my observations, highlights and criticisms deviate between lyrics and music on a project like this, but in this case they actually run parallel. Songs for me on this record tend to fall into two categories and this applies to Beats and to Skinner's vocals equally. They either offer up something smart, engaging that feels made with care or something super on the nose, a bit tacky and haphazardly made. On the positive side of that sit songs like Shake Hands With Shadows with sparse, dark synths, different breaks, and interesting lyrical twists and turns. Skinner's poetic strategy is most clear on this track, where he seems to deliberately avoid lines rhyming almost purposely, so that when he lands on one, it is actually more satisfying. And it's a strategy he uses often on the album. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't work. Bright Sunny Day is a track where he dispenses with that strategy, and as a result of that, great lines like, the world gave me its phone, to look at just one photo but i had to have a scroll and couplets like god when i'm in shit that's when i need him but i'm supposed to be an atheist where do i begin those are really cool when he dispenses with that strategy of just being purposely elusive troubled waters offers a breakbeat led track which is exciting and the heartbreak lyrics with melancholic gated synth chords combine to recall the classic street tune blinded by the lights i also quite like the songs that production wise are a complete departure from the garage style like walk of shame and gonna hurt when this is over this more untraditional instrumental actually provides a better backdrop for skinner's more slam poetry style lyrics as i said though there are a bunch of tracks that for me just feel a bit low effort production wise songs like money isn't everything and not a good idea in particular where the maybe this is not a good idea and surrounding nursery rhyme melodies just have me rolling my eyes despite these low points and a few kind of mid tracks i actually found myself coming to enjoy the record though i'd probably give this a six out of ten and i'd be keen to find out what seeing the movie adds to the whole experience Beautiful and Brutal Yard is the third full-length album from London rapper Jay Huss and is a sprawling exploration of the nascent Afro swing genre that Huss has spearheaded over his career, a fusion of Afro beat, dancehall and trap. It's easy to assume that a genre defined by its combination of other existing styles wouldn't actually leave much space for its own identity and might be a bit one-dimensional, but this album actually, actually shatters that expectation. Over the course of 19 tracks, we get light, dark, emotional, funny, sample based beats as well as digital and organic instrumentation. As an example of the variety on display, at the start we have the soft dreamlike electric piano of Who Told You, while Come Gully Bun has one of my favourite darker string sample based beats. J Huss demonstrates versatility throughout the record, always matching the tone of each beat while remaining clearly himself. My biggest hang up on the record to be honest though is I just can't help but cringe at some of the flagrant sleaziness held in the lyrics. I recognise that dancehall is, you know, it's a sexually charged genre, that is just the vibe and some of my hang ups might come from the fact of I'm just an awkward 30 year old but I do think there are some pretty objectively bad lyrics that lack any sort of like euphemism or creativity. 
At 19 tracks, this is also super long and there could be some tighter editing, especially on the back half. I would say it does a little bit more to justify its length in comparison to other rap albums in this era of 70 minute plus releases. But end of the day, if UK rap, dancehall, and or afro b or afro swing is your thing you most definitely have to check this record out for me it's a five out of ten but i can see this ranking a lot higher for fans of the genre so yeah thanks for listening to me chat absolute raff about these last couple of records you've reached the end of this free review but the price you've got to pay is easy you just got to hit the subscribe button and more importantly drop a comment tell me what you think did i get this right how wrong am I? What was your favorite track? What was your favorite album? Share some thoughts, show some love, or just hell some abuse in the comments. And there are some other videos linked in the description that you might like as well. Cheers.